a very good morning to one and all present welcome to the fifth day of the six days online fdtp on strength of materials one today among us we have uh, dr mini ramanan assistant professor department of civil engineering nit calicut uh, to talk uh, give a lecture on torsion so it's my great pleasure to give a brief introduction about her so she is currently assistant professor in civil engineering department nit calicut so before this she had been lecturer in awh engineering college uh, calicut uh, in 2003 and then later joined as assistant professor level in uh, 2010 at nit calicut and uh, continuing there still so she her basic education has been uh, btech in civil engineering from rc calicut with first class and mtech in structural engineering from nit calicut with distinction and she has done her phd in structural engineering from iit madras she has written a book uh, on active buckling control of structures in 2022 uh, the first edition has been released on 2022 She also has published around ten journals, thirteen conference publications, and four book chapters. Uh, she has also completed consultancy work around forty uh, lakhs worth. She has guided many projects, including four PhD uh, students, fourteen PG projects, thirteen uh, UG projects. So she has also coordinated FTPs and given uh, delivered lectures. and her uh, major uh, su uh, subjects that she has handled has been engineering mechanics analysis structural design uh, theory of elasticity and plasticity so it's a great pleasure to you have you here ma'am welcome ma'am and i request you to take over the session now uh, thank you uh, ruby thank you for that uh, introduction good introduction and uh, good uh, good morning everyone uh, uh, good morning uh, hod madam uh, and all the participants uh, can i start the ppt ruby yes ma'am yes ma'am okay thank you uh am i uh, my slides are visible yes ma'am okay uh so very uh, warm welcome to all the participants to the uh, this uh, lecture uh, on strength of materials uh, uh, ca301 uh, and today i am supposed to deliver a session on uh, closed and open coiled helical springs and springs in series and parallel and uh, design of buffer springs okay 
Uh, so uh, actually, I don't want to uh, split it into a uh, difference. So uh, first of all, I'll be uh, delivering uh, the theory part uh, of uh, the uh, open coiled and closed coiled helical springs, and then uh, we will move to uh, some problems uh, so that uh, you can get the feel of it. Okay. So let me give you a small introduction on uh, these uh, kinds of helical springs. Uh, now, uh, springs, most of you uh, have already uh, seen and touched also uh, in your lab, especially, say, MT lab, that is material testing lab, or uh, it might be called as, uh, say, strength of materials lab, etc. So it is actually a part of uh, your curriculum, beta curriculum, and one of the tests that you might have uh, done will be the test on springs. So you might have seen both closed coiled uh, spring and also uh, an open coiled spring. And what you have seen is actually a helical spring. Okay? It is a helical spring. Uh, there are actually different types of springs, uh, like uh, not only helical springs, there can be uh, other type of springs like uh, leaf springs, bellevillea springs, flat springs. So different types of springs are there, but I'll be confining only to helical springs because uh, uh, we are mostly uh, concerned with helical springs actually. And uh, you might have done experiments, you have applied the load on the spring and found uh, its modulus of rigidity, stiffness, etc. So let us see what is the theory behind it. You might have learned the theory, but still uh, springs actually slightly complicated, especially closed coil springs. How does it deflect? How does what happens when the load is applied? And in the lab, the load applied by you uh, is basically the axial load. That is uh, uh, the weight W, maybe which I will show uh, here. Here you can see a, a helical spring and you can see the load that you have applied here. There will be a small hook like thing and you uh, put a load here. I mean, this is the way you apply uh, the load for a closed coiled helical spring and this is a tensile load, okay? And this is axial load. And even in open coil spring also, uh, you have applied an axial load, okay? But in most of the textbooks, you can see, uh, in addition to the axial load, the derivations are there when you apply a torque also, an axial torque uh, to the springs. And uh, when you come to the derivations, uh, it will be difficult for you to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'll confine only to axial load uh, for the time being and we'll do some problems and if uh, time permits I will go to uh, uh, a torque that is uh, an axial couple that is applied to the spring also and then we'll do some problems on it but uh, this is a basic actually understanding that you should uh, know uh, before going to the complex type of loads okay now uh, what is actually a spring uh, uh, what is it used for, Where? where what are its applications, etc. We know what is a spring, it is an elastic member uh, which uh, undergo uh, deformation and uh, it comes back to its original shape when the load is removed and it can store large amount of energy, strain energy. So it, it is applied uh, almost everywhere in our life, almost, uh, I mean, spring is very much used, especially in our everyday life, for example, in watches in clocks, uh, in automobiles. So uh, a lot of applications are there for uh, this uh, kind of uh, structure that is springs. And uh, what is its purpose actually? The springs can store energy and also it can dissipate energy. It can control motions. We can measure the force using the springs. So lots of applications are there. So in our everyday lives, like for example, say a watch, clock, etc., we use the spring to store energy. And uh, uh, in the case of, uh, say, for example, elevators, in elevators, uh, railway wagons, etc., there also we use the spring. And that is used for absorbing the shock. Okay, so here the energy is absorbed or some uh, dissipated in a different form. So this is uh, basically used to absorb the shock uh, and uh, or some impact load uh, uh, and make sure that it is uh, smoothly landed, the elevator is smoothly landed, etc. So such kind of springs we call as buffer springs. We will move to buffer springs later. Uh, 
Uh, then we use uh, springs in automobiles. So most of you, uh, you are a mechanical engineer, definitely you know uh, springs are exclusively needed in automobiles, especially in brakes, uh, clutches, etc., to control the motions. And uh, you might have used spring balances also. In spring balance, what we use is we measure the force. So uh, the uh, spring is used to measure force also in uh, for example in spring balance so you can see the application of the springs and uh, where it is used uh, etc so lots of applications so that comes to the i mean there's the importance uh, of the spring and uh, why you should know uh, how the springs behave uh, how to find the deflection of the spring and what happens how does the spring behave when it is subjected to different types of loads etc so that's why we learn about springs now okay so uh, let us start with an introduction of the springs what i have given here in the slide springs here undergo considerable angular and linear deformations without undergoing permanent distortion. So this is just one of the definition of the spring. There are lots of definitions given in uh, different types of textbooks. Uh, it is defined as an elastic member, uh, which can uh, store large amount of energy, uh, or it can be uh, considered as a member uh, with a large amount of resilience. So it is a device for storing up energy in the form of resilience. Now, what is meant by resilience? Resilience is actually, this is a technical term which all the uh, engineers should know. Uh, resilience is uh, nothing but the ability to uh, store energy. So, and also to come back to its original shape when the load is removed. So spring uh, has very high uh, resilience. Then it can, it is used as a storage of energy. It is used to absorb excess energy as I have already told. And it's one of the applications I have already given here. Now, uh, there are basically different types of springs, depends upon its shapes, how it is wound, uh, uh, and what are, what are the uh, stresses that comes into picture, etc. Uh, but uh, for the time being, I'm classifying the springs basically into two types so that you will understand it better. I don't want more complications. So let us divide the springs basically into two types, that is a torsion springs and bending springs. Okay, so let us see what is meant by a torsion spring. In a torsion spring, uh, the resilience or the energy will be stored in the form of uh, torsion. Okay, or the resilience is due to torsion. Or when you apply the load, uh, the uh, spring uh, will develop a, a twist. I mean, uh, the diameter, the coil of the spring will get twisted and uh, the energy, the work, that is applied or the load that is applied will be stored in the form of torsional energy and the best example for torsion springs uh, are closely coiled helical springs subjected to axial pull this is very important each word is important please note that close coiled helical spring subjected to axial pull now when this uh, same close coiled helical spring is subjected to an axial torque then uh, the stress developed will not be uh, torsion uh, it will be bending. Okay, that also, uh, if time permits, I will explain the theory of that. Now, let us confine to only axial pulls and axial compressions. Now, uh, the next type of uh, spring is uh, bending springs, and here the resilience is due to bending. And you know what is bending? Now, uh, example for bending springs are uh, leaf springs, play springs, etc. Uh, now, what about open coil uh, helical spring? Open coil helical spring does not actually uh, fall into any of these uh, exclusively because when a, an axial load is applied to an open coil helical spring, uh, both torsion as well as bending will happen in the coil. So as a result, uh, we can say that an open coiled helical spring falls under both category, that is, uh, it's a torsion spring as well as a bending spring, okay? And now after this, I would like to introduce some of the terms that is used here uh, in the spring. Uh, so before uh, going into the theory uh, or derivations, you should understand what all these uh, terms are. And most of you might know some of uh, these terms, but still uh, let me have uh, 
uh, an introduction to this. You know what is stiffness, uh, the stiffness of the uh, spring. Uh, and how do you find the stiffness? Stiffness we usually find by uh, dividing uh, W by delta load divided by the deflection produced by the load will give you the stiffness. And load required to produce unit deflection, that is the definition of uh, stiffness. And suppose instead of axial pull or uh, axial compression, uh, suppose if the load applied is a torque, then you have to modify it accordingly, then it will be uh, the moment required to produce unit uh, rotation. Uh, or twist, unit twist, etc. So then we call it as torsional stiffness. Uh, this is uh, there are different types of stiffness. So the general definition for stiffness is load required to produce unit deflection. Okay. Now, now this is a picture of uh, a closed coil spring and an open coiled helical spring. Uh, and this I have from wherever I have taken the figures I have just acknowledged that is what is given here as reference uh, and here, uh, here you can see uh, uh, there are many things many technical terms you should understand now here this is actually a line diagram of the uh, this uh, thing spring let me check whether I can go for a pointer Okay, uh, Ruby, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So if anything is there, please inform, please unmute and uh, inform me. And also, if you haven't understood, uh, please unmute and uh, communicate with me. Okay. So uh, now here you can see that this is a spring and I have put the axis here, okay? Now this is the axis of the spring. So the definition of the axis is, it is a line of symmetry about which the helix is wound. So this is a line of symmetry about which the helix, this is a helical uh, spring which is wound. Now please note that for an open coil spring, all these plane of the coil will be uh, exactly uh, horizontal uh, or the angle that the, each of these plane uh, makes with uh, this axis will be 90 degree. This plane will be exactly perpendicular, but in the case of open coil, it may not be exactly perpendicular, it will be slightly inclined. Uh, so this is actually uh, for a, a closed coil, for a closed coil, that is what I have shown here. Now you should know what is meant by mean coil diameter. Please note that this is the mean coil diameter, okay? Uh, and why the mean? Because uh, when uh, you, uh, those who have already taken this uh, coil, uh, you might have uh, measured the diameter using, say, screw gauge, etc. And you can measure the outer diameter, also the inner diameter, and take the average of it, and you will get the mean diameter. Okay. Uh, is my voice breaking? No, ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, now, the definition of mean coil diameter, what is given is, this is the largest dimension of the helix, and it is equal to the diameter of the circle formed by the projection of the helix on a surface perpendicular to the axis. Now, in the case of an, uh, a closed coil spring, uh, you can see that if you uh, project uh, this, it will be the, exactly the same uh, D only, uh, but if you have an inclined plane, uh, then comes the projection. So when you come, when the coils are inclined, then uh, you have to imagine the projection of that inclined plane on the uh, horizontal plane, and then you have to take the diameter. So the this is a complete definition of the mean coil diameter, and the radius r r is actually half of this mean coil diameter, which is equal to d by two. Now, the number of turns or the number of active coils denoted by small n, it is nothing but the count or the number of uh, coils you have. This is the count of how many number of turns the helix has. And sometimes uh, the turn uh, will be only half and, uh, at the end. So uh, you sometimes you neglect it, etc. So number of complete turns, that is what you are supposed to take. Okay. So suppose if it is only half turn, you uh, forget neglect that. Now, what about the pitch?
Okay, now uh, the pitch, you know what is meant by the pitch. I'm unable to get this laser under my control. Uh, so Okay, now what is meant by pitch? This is a distance between any two points on the helix that are exactly one turn apart and measured parallel to the axis. And this also you might have measured using a scale. So you take the center to center distance and it is marked here uh, in, uh, uh, in the figure, the pitch, the distance between the, uh, the two points on the helix that are exactly one turn apart. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, uh, close and open coil. Okay. Now, the next term is the total length of the wire. The total length of the wire is uh, shown here. I'm unable to get the laser point under control. Okay. Yeah, this is actually, we call it as the free length. Uh, free length and solid length, actually, they are different, which is given as, uh, as if it is shown. Uh, but the total length of the wire, we take it as uh, uh, 2 pi r into n, uh, where r is the mean radius and n is the number of coils. And uh, diameter, small d, is actually the diameter of the wire. You can see this uh, diameter of the wire here in this figure. I think I'll come out and come back. Something wrong with Okay. Now this is the diameter, wire diameter, uh, that is the cross section of the wire. Okay. And the pitch is again shown here. And uh, uh, this is a radius, the uh, radius of the wire is actually half of the diameter of the wire. And please uh, note that uh, this is actually the mean diameter. This is a mean diameter, capital D of the wire, uh, of the spring. And uh, the small d is actually the diameter of the coil, okay, that is uh, to, uh, the spring is made up of. Then you should know what is the axial movement or deflection of the spring delta. And uh, for that, you should know how the delta is formed. Yeah, uh, so here you can see that this is a spring. When you apply a load uh, to the spring, what will happen is that it will move downwards. So uh, the spring will deflect and that deflection is marked here as delta. Okay, so uh, this is actually the axial deflection. And also uh, when you apply an axial load here, uh, this uh, this is actually the cross section of the individual uh, wi uh, wire, and uh, this wire will uh, twist will twist about its own axis. Okay, so you can see the angle by which this cross section twists. This is called it. Uh, I had put it as theta here, and this is actually the uh, diameter of the spring, and this small d is the diameter of uh, this wire. 
Yeah, and uh, how does it actually happens is that when you apply the load W here, it, uh, it behaves like uh, an equivalent shaft is shown here. And uh, you can see that when you apply a load like this, what will happen? It will uh, twist like that here. If you apply a load here, if you take any cross section here, so this is actually a small half, one half turn. Uh, and how does it behave? So when you apply a W, the torque will be W into this distance. W into d by 2, which is our W into R, and WR will be the torque that we are going to we are applying to this cross section, and this will twist by an angle theta. Okay, so this is what you should understand basically for a, a spring, uh, for a closed coil spring. So uh, this is the axial moment. Uh, uh, that I have uh, that that is delta and in some of the text it is given as delta and some as x etc and this is a deflection of the spring vertical deflection of the spring then you should know what is meant by angle of helix uh, the helix angle or angle of helix it is the angle made by the spring wire axis and a line perpendicular to the axis of the spring okay so uh, actually this is uh, this is a, a angle or the angle of helix which i have shown here it is the spring wire please note it this is a spring wire and this is the uh, uh, line parallel to the spring wire and uh, line perpendicular to the axis of the spring and this is the horizontal axis and this horizontal axis is perpendicular to the axis of the spring okay so the angle between uh, these two lines uh, is called uh, the angle of the helix this also uh, you can measure in the lab or some of you might have measured in the lab now uh, just to understand each of uh, these terms i had put two figures here uh, whatever i could get so this is a wire diameter the pitch you can see the distance between uh, these two uh, consecutive turns and this is the angle of the helix the angle between the line coinciding this and the line perpendicular to the axis of the helix and then please note that this is the outside diameter and this is the inside diameter and then the mean diameter is called as capital d and then this is another figure so that you will understand it better and uh, uh, here usually uh, we take x axis y axis etc to uh, for the coordinate systems and uh, in open coil spring when we consider open coil springs we may have to use uh, uv coordinate systems also so that uh, you understand one coordinate system will be inclined to the other coordinate system by some angle and in some of the texts, the deflections are also uh, given, uh, like for example, UVW, and uh, these symbols should not be, uh, I mean, confusing. Sometimes if UV and W are the deflections, usually UV and W, small do, V and W, are the deflections along the X, Y, and Z axis. That is the usual uh, definition. Uh, and you should not confuse U with the U axis also. So I'll just explain the terms used here and if you are referring any other text the same symbol might be used for a different uh, uh, definition for a different definition also so you should be very careful what it means now the free length and solid length you should know what is meant by free length and solid length now free length it is the original length of the spring in the absence of any external load and that is what is shown here so without any application of the load this is a free length okay and solid length what is meant by solid length solid length it is the length of the spring along its longitudinal axis when the spring is compressed in such a way that uh, there exists no noticeable gap between two adjacent coils. Okay, so uh, suppose if you compress the spring in so uh, in such a manner that you don't have any gaps between the coils, then uh, that length we call it as the solid length. And uh, if you know the number of turns and the diameter of the individual coil, then definitely LS is ND. It's a very important formula. You may each formula is very important. You have to put it somewhere in your brain. You have to use it uh, while solving problems. Okay, and now if you, uh, I mean, free length is actually made up of the solid length LS uh, plus uh, this gap, okay, the gap between uh, the individual coils. Uh, now, this is a relation between the pitch uh, alpha and R. I'm not going into the details of it. Does everyone know where tan alpha is equal to P by 2 pi R just to calculate uh, the alpha, etc. 
Uh, now, the difference between closed coil spring and open coil spring, I have just uh, uh, tabulated it so that uh, you will understand uh, the basic difference. Uh, I'll just go through uh, these uh, wire. In the case of closed coil spring, the wire of the closed coil helical spring is wound tightly, providing no gap between the two adjacent coils of the spring. So as, I, as it is shown in the figure, you don't have any gap at all. And those who have gone to the uh, labs also, you might have seen that there is no gap between the two coils of the springs. And in the case of open coil spring, wire of your open coil helical spring is wound not so tightly and thus sufficient space or gap exists between the two adjacent coils. Okay, so that is one of the difference between these two types of springs. And then in the case of closed coil spring, the helix angle is usually 10 degree or below, usually very much uh, say less than 10 degree. So, uh, and in the case of open coil spring, the helix angle is usually more than 10 degree. So it will be slightly, the plane of the coil will be slightly inclined to the horizontal plane. Now, now, pitch of the spring wire is smaller uh, due to the small helix angle. Here, the pitch of the spring wire is comparatively larger as a result of larger helix angle. And here, actually, it cannot undergo axial compression because it's almost very much closely wound. So it cannot undergo axial compression. Uh, so the type of load that is applied in the labs, etc., you can see that a tensile load or an axial tensile load is applied to the closed coil spring. And it is designed to resist stretching and twisting and here in the case of open coil spring, it is designed to undergo uh, extension and compression and deflects its length accordingly under the action of axial load. So here uh, it can uh, undergo extension and also compression. So both kind of loads we can apply here, both tensile load and uh, compressive load. But in the lab, what is the kind of load that we apply? It is not tensile load. We apply compressive load on open coil spring. And then uh, uh, we find the parameters. Now, mechanical properties like uh, modulus of rigidity, etc. Now, and closed coil springs are commonly used in heavy duty applications like uh, garage doors, wise grip pliers, self-closing door hinges, bypass cycle stand spring, etc. And whereas in open coil spring, it is commonly used in low duty applications like spring operated ballpoint pen, uh, bike shock absorber, uh, valves, brakes, clutches, etc. So these are some of the uh, so only some of the differences between open coil spring and the closed coil spring. Now let us go to the uh, uh, closed coil spring in detail and uh, let us see uh, well, how does it behave? How does it behave when an axial load is applied and how to find uh, the delta, the deflection, the angle of twist theta, provided we know the load applied, the axial load applied, which is W. And if we know the geometry properties like uh, the uh, diameter, mean diameter, the radius, the small diameter of the wire, number of turns, the angle uh, of helix, etc. If all these things are uh, known to you, uh, how to find out the angle of twist, this theta and uh, this uh, delta. Okay, uh, actually this is what we are going to learn now. Now please note that I am using capital W for axial load and uh, theta for angle of the twist and uh, the theta and W is clearly shown here in the picture. You should understand it very clearly. Please note that I repeat when the spring is subjected to an axial load w the wire of the spring gets twisted like a shaft so this we should be able to imagine when you apply a load w here to the spring as a whole what is happening to the wire wire of the uh, individual coil what will happen uh, this w uh, it will uh, become a torque it's like a torque will be applied to the uh, wire here and it will rotate because it is a circular cross section, it will rotate, uh, and this is a circle, uh, coil of circular cross section, and the angle of uh, rotation this is actually called the angle of twist here theta. Okay, and if you draw the free body diagram also, you can see now uh, this is the W, which is the external load, and whenever you apply an external load. Uh, the uh, spring uh, has to resist and internal forces will develop. So what are the internal forces that uh, will be developing here uh, to resist this W? So here, you know, there is a W uh, load acting downward. So definitely 
to balance it, you should have a shear force. We can put it as V, which is acting upwards. So a shear force definitely will be there uh, acting on the cross-section of this coil. And also you have W into D by 2 or W into R, which is the torque, uh, which is the external load. And to resist it, then you should have an equilibrating, uh, uh, I mean, internal torque or uh, should develop here uh, to resist the, this external torque. So uh, in, in the cross-section here, you uh, have uh, the shear force V and uh, the torque which is equal to wr so this cross-section will be subjected to these these are the internal stresses that will be developing in the coil and these are the only two uh, things you have to uh, take care of in the case of closed coil helical spring and please note that bending uh, bending does not take place bending please note that uh, bending of this wire uh, and that happens only in open coil spring so we'll discuss about that maybe when we go to that section so hope you have understood what is this theta, how does uh, this cross-section rotates when you apply this rule W, okay. And now we will learn how to find uh, an expression for this delta and also for theta, etc. Now, uh, if theta is the total angle of twist along the wire and if delta is a deflection of the spring under the action of the load W along the axis of the coil, then delta is equal to r theta. So this is simple mathematics. R theta is equal to r by radius. So theta is equal to delta by r uh, or uh, it's as simple as it. Okay, so delta is equal to r theta or I can put it in terms of uh, uh, the mean coil diameter that is d by 2 into theta or this is a relation between theta, delta and r. So theta is equal to, I can put it as delta by r or I can put r in terms of d by 2. So theta is equal to 2 delta by d. Okay, this is a very important relation uh, that you should understand. Now, as I have told you, to maintain the equilibrium of a segment of the spring, uh, you should have a shear force uh, which should be developed at the exposed cross section of the uh, wire and also you should have a torque which is equal to uh, w into r w to d by 2 and shear force v so v is the usual uh, symbol used for shear force and that should be equal to the external load w and the torque that should uh, that is developed inside will be equal to w into r and this is these are the two internal forces that is required at any section excess of the uh, spring uh, in the case of a closed coil spring now in every theory, there will be some, some amount of uh, assumptions and you should be uh, very uh, careful about these assumptions because these the, those theories can be applied only under certain uh, conditions. So that also you should be uh, uh, understanding. So what are the assumptions used in the theory here? Uh, so here you can please note that shear stress is caused by the direct shear force is uniformly distributed across the cross section of the wire and is negligible. So how does the shear stress, the, uh, the symbol used for shear stress is usually tau and shear stress will be uh, developing due to uh, torsion and also due to V, that is a, a shear force, okay. And uh, the shear stress due to shear force will be V by the area, uh, area of cross section of uh, the wire and the shear stress due to the torque uh, uh, will be obtained by using the pure torsion formula okay i hope you remember the pure torsion formula and you also you need a pure bending formula uh, in these derivations so for closed coil spring only pure torsion formula is required and when you go to open coil spring you need the pure bending formula also now uh, this is one of the assumption uh, in, uh, that is uh, taken in the theory and the bending effects are neglected uh, we assume that the angle of helix is very small so the bending effects are neglected here and the helix angle is considered to be so small that it can be neglected and the coil of the spring is assumed to lie in a plane which is nearly perpendicular to the axis of the spring so this is another assumption we assume that all the coils or the plane of the coil is approximately horizontal itself or it is uh, perpendicular to the axis of the spring. So these are the assumptions in the derivation of the closed coil helical spring. Now, now this is a pure torsion formula. Uh, it is, uh, hope you know the derivation and also while deriving this uh, to pure torsion formula, there are so many assumptions. I'm not going into the details of that. Uh, 
and I have just put uh, this formula here, T by J is equal to tau by R is equal to G theta by L, where T is uh, external torque applied, J is the polar moment of uh, area, uh, which is uh, equal to, uh, I mean, actually for a circular section, it will be I by two, half of the uh, second moment of area, where I, the second moment of area for a circular section uh, of uh, diameter small d is equal to pi d to the power four by 64 and uh, j will be half of it so it will be uh, i mean j is actually uh, two times i so it will be pi d to the power 4 by 32 okay and then tau is the shear stress r is the small uh, d by 2 small d by 2 it is the radius of the coil and g is the modulus of rigidity uh, of uh, the material by which the spring is made of and uh, the spring is usually made of high carbon steel or mean, uh, medium carbon steel and sometimes it will be mixed with alloys also uh, you know, like stainless steel, uh, phosphorus, bronze, gas, etc. so that uh, it becomes uh, uh, corrosionless, etc. So usually G we go for you take for uh, the steel. So the steel, G for the steel we usually take for here in the derivations and theta is actually the angle of twist I have already given and L is the total length of the spring, a length of the whatever specimen. So this is a general torsion formula and from here we can get an expression for theta in terms of T, we can get T in terms of uh, what is that uh, uh, theta, so all these things are related. So this is a very important formula and you have to by heart keep it somewhere in your brain while doing calculations okay so here let me write theta is equal to tl by gj from here and uh, t is actually we know the torque that is applied to the cross section is w into d by 2 which is w into r uh, in the case of spring so in our particular case t uh, the torsion to that is applied will be wr and l is 2 pi r n the length of the spring total length of the spring now uh, we are going to uh, learn how to find uh, the angle of twist theta in terms of uh, the external load applied uh, in terms of its geometric properties and material properties that is r and g and d now how to find this uh, derivative i mean how to do this uh, it's a very simple derivation theta is equal to uh, we know it is tl by gj and starting from here we will get a an expression for theta now uh, what do you see t is equal to wr so here in this expression uh, we will substitute for t t is equal to wr l is equal to 2 pi r n uh, g as such and j is pi d to the power 4 by 32 so you substitute all these and i have just substituted here so uh, here w t is equal to wr uh, and L as such, G as such, and J pi D to the power 4 by 32, okay? So if you substitute as such and, uh, uh, and then you do uh, some modifications, uh, you put the 32 up, etc., and you substitute for L is equal to 2 pi R in here, and then um, uh, simplify this, finally you will be getting uh, this expression for the angle of twist that is theta. So 64 W R square N by G D to the power 4 radians. So this is a, a very common formula and uh, questions will come uh, where you have to use this formula and find say uh, theta directly or sometimes theta will be given and uh, sometimes you may have to find any of the other quantities. Okay, so many, uh, I can see uh, the questions asked, university questions, in most of the university questions asked, mostly close coil springs, uh, this formula is very important, you have to learn this. So theta is equal to 64W R square N by GD to the power 4. And once you get the angle of twist, in, most, in almost every spring, in almost every spring, the, what we learn is how to find out the theta, the angle of twist. Okay, once you get the expression for theta, everything else is connected and we can get the expression for all the other uh, terms like strain energy, stiffness, etc. All these things we can find by using the general equations that we have already learned um, uh, in strength of materials. Now, what is delta? How to find the axial deflection? Delta is equal to R theta, we know it. And uh, this is theta and you multiplied by r so this will become 64 w r cube n by g d to the power 4 okay uh, so this is how you find the delta so this is the fundamental uh, derivation 
uh, in uh, close coiled helical spring. Now, uh, this is one method of finding or deriving the deflection delta. Now, we can derive delta by using a different method. So please note that the same problem can be uh, uh, solved by different different methods. Like for example, say mechanics you have learned by you can solve a problem by using Newton's method. You can say, uh, uh, solve the same problem by using energy method. Uh, many methods are there. So uh, just like that here also, we can find uh, this delta by using energy method also. So different textbooks will be uh, using different methods. So I'm uh, using, I mean, deriving delta by using that method also. So torsional strain energy stored. So please note that uh, whatever we know the external work done will be stored in the form of strain energy in the material uh, on which the load is applied. So here uh, the, uh, the external uh, work done is actually half W delta. W is axial load that is applied and delta is the extension of the spring and this work done will be stored in the spring in the form of torsional strain energy and uh, the uh, strain energy due to torsion is half T theta. This we know. A new substitute for T and theta here. We, we have already derived the expression for theta and T we know it is WR. So you substitute for T, uh, T as WR and uh, theta is equal to uh, what is it? Uh, that expression, which I just substituted that expression here, and uh, you will get the same expression for uh, delta, which we have obtained earlier. Okay. Now comes the other uh, terms uh, like stiffness, uh, shear stress etc. Uh, you should know uh, how. So in the problem, you will be asked to find the stiffness of the spring. Uh, or you will be asked to find what is the uh, shear stress uh, that is coming onto the cross section of the spring, etc. Okay. Now, uh, Ruby, am I audible? You are audible, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. Stiffness. Stiffness, uh, I have already told you that it is a load per unit deflection. Uh, so it is simple. So if you once you get uh, the definition for uh, delta, then it is W by delta. Just substitute delta here, in, and finally you will be getting this expression: G d to the power four by sixty four n r q. Uh, either you can by heart it, or else you can just simply. Or the only thing what you have to keep in mind is actually theta and delta, and other things you can maybe you can derive by yourself and apply it in the uh, problems. Now, uh, this is very simple stiffness, then shear stress. Shear stress induced at any section, uh, which is distant R from the axis uh, due to the torsion. Uh, and there will be two types of shear stress. One will be due to the torsion and the other one due to the axial load W. Okay, uh, Due to torsion, which is uh, T and axial load, which is W. So due to the torsion, um, there will be uh, she uh, shear stress and uh, that I am putting it as tau T. Okay just to differentiate. So the torsion, shear stress due to the uh, torsion T, which is equal to WR, I have put it as tau T. And the shear stress that is developed due to the shear force that is V, uh, I have, I'm putting it as tau S. Okay. And how will you get tau T? Tau T you will get from the torsion formula, which is equal to T by J into R. Uh, where R is the radius of the wire and you can substitute for T and J and R. T is WR, J is pi D to the power 4 by 32 and small r is D by 2. So you will get tau uh, due to the shear stress will be 16 WR pi D Q. Okay. And uh, the other uh, sh uh, shear stress due to the uh, axial O W uh, that is actually simply uh, uni uh, we assume that it is uniformly distributed over the cross section of the wire and it is simply load by area axial O W by the area of cross section of the wire that is pi d squared by 4 so you get it at 4 w by pi d squared and the maximum shear stress is actually the sum of these two shear stress due to the uh, torque plus the shear stress due to the shear and i'm just adding these two here 16. so this formula also might be familiar to you it's a very important formula tau max is equal to 16 wr by pi dq and in labs also you might be asked to find the shear stress and also to find you'll be asked to find the load uh, load deflection graph uh, to uh, i mean shear how i mean load versus uh, shear stress graph 
then strain energy graphs, etc. So this is a formula that you might have used. So very important formula, 16WR by pi dq plus 4W by pi d square. And I can take 16WR by pi dq uh, as a common thing and I just modified it like this, 1 plus d by 4R. And usually we uh, don't uh, consider this uh, shear stress due to the axial load. Um, it's very much negligible compared to this. So usually uh, the shear stress in the close coil spring uh, is uh, taken as 16 WR by pi dq, which is due to the torque. Okay. Uh, and again, problems can arise here. Sometimes you will be asked to find uh, what is the shear stress, maximum shear stress that is coming onto the spring, or sometimes you will be given the maximum shear stress. The shear stress, maximum shear stress that is allowed uh, 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 in a spring, and you will be asked to design the spring. You will be asked to find the uh, diameter, small d, or whatever, something else. Okay, so in both ways the questions may come. Now, uh, what is meant by strain energy? Strain energy is stored by the spring, usually represented by U. And uh, we know that the strain energy uh, stored is equal to the work done. And the work done is half uh, into uh, load into uh, deflection or half into torque into the angle of twist. So half into T into theta. And uh, I have substituted for T and theta here uh, because I have given the expression for T and theta separately here and these two expressions I have substituted here. So what is T? We know uh, this is from the pure torsion formula. T is equal to tau by R into J. And here what I have done is uh, here the small r I have uh, written in terms of small d, d by 2, and j is pi d to the power 4 by 32. So you will get t is equal to tau pi d q by 16. So that is what I have substituted here, half into tau into pi d q by 16 into, and what is theta? Theta is actually tau by r into L by g. Again, this is from pure torsion formula. And I simply changed r to d by 2, and uh, I have got this 2, uh, 2 tau L by g d. Uh, and uh, this theta also I substituted here, 2 tau L by G. So I substitute for T and theta here, and then I have to slightly do some simplification. Uh, and uh, tau square by 4G, I have to put it together, and this 4 should go with pi D square. So pi D square by 4 together, and then L. So actually pi D square by 4 is nothing but the area of cross-section of the spring. So I can put tau square by 4G into A into L and that A into L is nothing but the volume. So tau square by 4G into volume, and that is the strain energy stored. So you can find the strain energy stored using if you probably if you know T and theta, you can simply directly found, find it as half T into theta, uh, or else if the shear stress is given and uh, these quantities are given, then you have to find it by using this formula tau square by 4G into volume. Now please note that this is a strain energy due to torsion. Similarly, uh, there is a formula to find the strain energy due to bending also. And for that, you have to use a pure bending formula. So and, uh, maybe I will come across that when we deal with bending. Okay. Uh, here, what I have done is, in some of the texts, you can see that instead of uh, uh, tau square by 4G into A into L, it will give you a formula in terms of like 32 w square r cube n by gd to the bar 4 and then they do the problem so but you should understand how it is obtained so i have just explained uh, it here so here uh, actually what they have done is uh, this tau we know the expression for tau uh, and uh, tau is equal to 16 w r by pi d cube so here uh, uh, we have substituted for tau here uh, and then uh, simplify and then what I have done is I have substituted for A here pi d square by 4 and L is equal to 2 pi r n. And I can do a simplification, you will get this formula. Okay. Uh, so either uh, you can use this or this, both are same only. Uh, but sometimes uh, instead of uh, this uh, shear stress, etc., these are the quantities that will be given in the question. So uh, using this formula will be faster than this. So, or as we can find tau by using this formula and then use that. So there are different ways in which you can do a problem. Now u can be obtained in a different manner uh, also like half w into delta. We can substitute for delta. We have already obtained an expression for delta. So here I just uh, substituted for delta here and I will get it directly. 
this is another way of getting uh, an expression for strain energy. Okay. So, uh, okay. So these are the fundamentals, uh, quantities, fundamental quantities that is uh, uh, that has to be derived or that has to be understood or calculated or found in closed coil helical spring subjected to an axial uh, pool. Okay. Uh, we'll do problems on it later. Let me complete uh, open coil springs also, and then we will move to some problems. Okay, so can I move to uh, open coil? If you have any doubts here, I can stop, or else I'll proceed. Um, can I proceed? You can proceed, ma'am. Okay. So let us go to open coil helical springs. Now, uh, this here, uh, you have to be slightly um, careful and uh, very much attending. Uh, now, this is a, an open coil uh, helical spring. And you can see that uh, the uh, this axis or the plane of the coil is not exactly horizontal, it is inclined. So these are the plane of the individual coil. It is inclined that it will be making an angle alpha with the horizontal, okay? And R is the radius, mean radius of the coil. Uh, D is the diameter of the wire, etc. And this open coiled uh, spring uh, will be subjected to, again, we are considering only an axial load now, when it is subjected to an axial load W. When it is subjected to an axial load W, what happens if I take a cross section? If I take a cross section, uh, uh, this W will produce a torque WR. Okay, and please note that this WR will be about this horizontal axis. The torque due to the W that is applied uh, will be acting about the horizontal axis, which I have put as U here. U is a horizontal axis, and V is a vertical axis. Okay. Uh, but in the case of uh, the wire here, uh, please note that this is a cross section of the wire and Y axis, I have put it exactly normal to the cross section. Y is an axis normal to the cross section of the wire and X axis is an axis perpendicular to this Y axis. Okay, and uh, this wire, the twist of uh, this cross section will be about this Y axis. And if you have any moment about the x-axis, it will be causing the bending, okay? So the torque that is coming from this capital W is actually WR. And this WR uh, will be uh, causing a torsion and also the bending of this uh, coil, okay? So what we can do is we can resolve this uh, WR along this y-axis and also along this x-axis. Okay. So, uh, suppose if alpha is the angle between these two, uh, the horizontal line and the uh, line uh, along the axis of the wire, uh, then the component of WR uh, about this y-axis will be WR cos alpha. So, here you should know how to resolve the quantity uh, in, uh, between uh, two in two mutually perpendicular directions. Okay. So, it should be thorough with these fundamentals. So WR cos alpha will be acting. So if this WR can be resolved uh, along the y-axis and along the x-axis, and the component of WR along the y-axis will be WR cos alpha. Okay, and this will produce the or this will cause the twisting of the coil, twisting of this coil, and the component WR sine alpha. This will be causing the bending of the coil about the x-axis. So it will bend about the x-axis, okay? So here you can see that the coil is subjected to both torsion and also bending. And the torque T is equal to WR cos alpha and the bending moment is equal to WR sin alpha. So uh, this you have to keep it somewhere in mind. Now, I am confined only to axial load now uh, because when you apply a torque, uh, this cause and sign will be uh, varying. So along the y-axis, instead of cause, you get sign. So I'm just confined only to the axial load now. And uh, later on, if uh, times there, we go 
for the other derivations also. So here you can see that in many of the textbooks, uh, I mean, uh, this is how the axis is taken. So in my case, I have taken the y-axis parallel to the uh, this uh, axis of the wire or normal to the cross-section. Suppose if I take a cross-section here, y-axis is normal to the cross-section of the wire and x-axis is perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay, and I have taken the horizontal axis as U U axis and uh, the vertical axis as V B axis. Okay, so in different textbooks, they might have chosen uh, in a different manner. Okay, so don't get, get confused. Sometimes uh, X axis will be chosen like this and Y axis will be chosen perpendicular. So this is, this is also, I have seen uh, textbooks like that also. So please understand it carefully. Y axis is simply the axis normal to the cross section and X axis is the uh, axis perpendicular to the axis normal to the cross section. And please note that this cross section will be inclined, inclined to the horizontal. It will not be, Y axis will not be uh, coinciding with the U axis. Please note that for a closed coil spring, uh, this y axis will coincide with u axis or x and y x and y will be coinciding with u and v okay that is what i have shown here uh, this is the suppose if i take the cross section this y axis is actually normal to the cross section so i can show i cannot show it here uh, because it will be towards you here I hope you are able to see this circle so y axis is uh, towards you and x axis is perpendicular uh, to the y axis and if you are considering uh, the third dimension z axis then you can take it like this so the cross section of the wire will be in the exact plane okay the cross section of the wire will be in the exact plane and the y axis is normal to the cross section and in the case of closed coil spring this x axis and v axis will coincide and u axis and uh, and y axis will coincide and in some textbook U, V, and W is used for deflections. So forget about that. I'm not, uh, uh, I mean, here U and V means the axis for me, okay, not deflection. And sometimes in some texts, uh, the coil uh, like this will be shown, okay. So this one half of the coil will be shown. Sometimes it can be this half or sometimes it can be this half. So to avoid confusion, I have taken both the halves, one limb of the spring, either like this or like this. So if it is like this, you have to draw like this. Y axis perpendicular to the cross section, U axis horizontal, V axis vertical, and X axis perpendicular to Y. And suppose if you are taking a limb like this, then this is a way to the figure it will be looking like. So Y axis again perpendicular to the cross section, X axis normal to Y, and then U and V horizontal and vertical. Okay, so only you have understood these axes, uh, then only you will be able to understand the resolution of the torque along the axis normal to the cross section and tangential to the cross section okay so it is a resolution you know, of uh, uh, this torque externally applied wr along two mutually perpendicular directions and uh, the component y, uh, about y axis is wr cos alpha which will be producing the twist so wr cos alpha will try to twist this twist this then uh, um, coil and wr sin alpha will try to bend this Okay, hope you have understood. Uh, again, I have uh, put another figure here uh, so that uh, you will understand. One limb means this is what I have taken. This is what I have taken when you consider the uh, open coil spring. And you can see that uh, this, uh, uh, suppose if I consider this cross section here, uh, the y axis will be normal, normal to this cross section. Okay? Now, the total length of the wire now will not be 2 pi Rn, it will be 2 pi Rn C alpha for in this case. Uh, and uh, the, again, we need to find, uh, uh, just like what you have found earlier, we have, you should find the angle of twist theta, uh, what is the uh, definition of how to find theta and how to find delta, etc. Okay. Uh, now, the axial force W exerts a moment. Uh, WR about the UU axis as I have shown in the figure and this WR is resolved into uh, two along the two axis. Uh, the uh, torque will be produced by WR cos alpha about the uh, torsional moment about the 
tar is produced about the y y axis okay that is a mystery uh, tar will be about the w r cos alpha about the y y axis and bending moment um, so this i have to correct The torque is about the y y axis. The torsional moment T is equal to W R cos alpha is about the y y axis. Please note the correction. Is y y. And the bending moment, WR sin alpha, it is about the XX axis, causing the bending. Now what we have to do is, we have to uh, do the derivation for theta. And we have twist the deflection delta, etc. Okay. Uh, so here what happens is that due to the torque, what will happen is that this wire will uh, twist. And the angle of twist, let me put it as theta. And now, due to the bending moment, which is equal to W R sine alpha, definitely it will bend. And the angle by which it bends, that is uh, put as theta x. So please note that theta and theta x, they are different. Okay, theta is the angle of twist. And theta x, I have uh, put it as the angle uh, of rotation. Uh, of uh, this uh, coil about the about the x-axis, okay? Uh, and here again, uh, you can consider this theta x can be obtained by using uh, here, uh, uh, using the pure bending formula. We know m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r, and m by ei is equal to 1 by r. m by ei is equal to 1 by r, and 1 by r is nothing but the curvature. Curvature and we put it as d square y by dx square. So this we have uh, we know uh, in strength of material. So d square y by dx square or y is the deflection uh, perpendicular to the load. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, y is the deflection uh, in the direction of the load. So d square y by dx square is equal to uh, uh, what is that m by di or actually it is a minus m by ei which we have already learned. And we can uh, get the expression for theta from here. And you have learned how to find the deflection of a beam, deflection of a beam uh, by using different methods, by double integration method, McCauley's method, uh, moment area method, etc., or strain energy method, uh, conjugate beam method, etc. So there, the fundamental equation that we have used there is d square y by dx square is equal to minus m by i. So that please note that minus is missing there. It's a mistake. Now, uh, d, uh, now what we what I am doing is d by dx, I can write d square y by dx square as d by dx of d by dy by dx is equal to m by ei. And I can separate this dx or I can shift or move this dx to this side. So here it will become d of dy by dx is equal to m by ei into dx. And if I integrate on both sides, I will get dy by dx is equal to integral m by ei dx plus one integration constant also will be there. And actually, this dy by dx is nothing but the slope, slope in the beam, which you might have learned. Uh, okay, so that slope is actually due to bending, due to the bending of the beam, not the angle of twist. Please understand. So that, that's why I had put it as theta about the x-axis, okay? So due to the bending in the x-axis. That's why just to differentiate this, I had put some x here. So, and this is nothing but if you integrate, so if you integrate it integral from 0 to L, uh, so dx, if you integrate it from 0 to L, it will be m by ei into 
uh, integral dx, it will become L. Okay, so that is why ML by EI. So this uh, angle theta x is equal to ML by EI. Most of you might be knowing this expression. Now I just uh, took it that because uh, uh, this expression is uh, required later. That is why I had just derived that an expression for theta x. And sometimes in some of the days, instead of theta x, they use a single phi also uh, for that angle. Now. Uh, again, uh, we will learn first of all how to find the deflection delta, uh, how to find the delta uh, due to the axial load applied in the case of an open coil helical spin. Now, let us use the energy method because it is very simple. Uh, so, uh, let us use uh, the work done is equal to uh, the uh, work done due to the uh, uh, what is that, internal uh, uh, forces. So, the internal forces that, that will be developing will be the T and uh, M, torsional. So the stress will be due to torsion and stress will be due to the bending moment M. And the work done due to the torsion T and the work done due to the M you know, it can be equated to the external work done, which is half W delta. Okay. So using this equation, we can get an expression for delta. This is a fundamental quantity which we have to derive for the spring. So uh, half W delta is equal to half T theta plus uh, the energy due to bending moment m m is equal to m square l by 2 ei so this also uh, very familiar to you but still i'll just explain i have explained it here work done due to the bending stress is equal to or due to the bending moment half m into uh, rotation the rotation due to this bending moment that is theta x and uh, i have substituted for theta x which is ml by ei you get it as m square l by 2 ei so that's what i have done here and i have just uh, uh, derived half t theta and m square l by 2 ei separately and then i have substituted it in this expression okay so half t into uh, theta we have already derived uh, uh, we know uh, the theta theta using uh, the expression it is uh, tl by gj using pure torsion formula uh, so this will become half t square l by gj and we know t is wr cos alpha so it will be wr cos alpha the whole square into l by 2 gj and here again we substituted for m which is wr sin alpha and then uh, this these two quantities have been substituted here so this will become w square r square cos square alpha l by 2 gj plus w square r square sin square alpha l by 2 gi and delta is equal to w r square l cos square alpha by gj plus sin square alpha by gi. Now this is a formula that you might have seen uh, in your uh, records etc. Lab record etc. And actually you were supposed to find the, the modulus of rigidity g. So what you have done there is you substituted for e using the formula e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu right where mu is the Poisson's ratio. Uh, and then you uh, you will get the formula in terms of g and this g you have to take outside and put it to the other side and this delta you have to bring it to this side to the left hand uh, side and this delta will come down in the denominator and you have to uh, put w by delta together w by delta together uh, which you will get from the graph the slope of uh, uh, the graph will give you w by delta and then you uh, apply the formula you will be able to get the g this is what you have done maybe in the lab so this is the derivation for delta uh, for the open coil spin now we can simplify this uh, delta slightly uh, more uh, because uh, you know w the same uh, formula i have uh, just copied and written here delta is equal to w r square l cos square alpha by gj plus n square alpha by ei so here what I have done is I just substituted for L here and also for J here and also for I. And then I will get a, a modified formula of it. So same thing only but I will get a modified formula for this. Okay. So W R square L. L is 2 pi R and C alpha here in the case of uh, an open coil spring. Uh, then J will be 2 I. Uh, and i is uh, nothing but pi d to the power 4 by 64 and 2i will be pi d to the power 4 by 32 and that is substituted here and uh, slightly modif modified and you have to do some simplification and finally you will be getting this formula 64 wr cube and c alpha by d to the power 4 
cos square alpha by g plus 2 sin square alpha by g. So uh, this also is a formula which is can be okay. And then you should know how to find the strain energy stored due to the bending. Uh, so you should know how to get the expression for you. So to get the expression for you, the fundamental equation is half m into theta s. Please note that the angle or the stop due to the bending moment m is theta x. Half m into theta x, where theta x is ml by ei. So you will get u is equal to m square l by 2 ei. Now you can uh, write this strain energy u in terms of the bending stress sigma. Sigma is the symbol used for the stress due to bending. Okay. So if I want to write u in terms of uh, sigma, how will I get? So u is equal to sigma square by 8e into a into l. This also uh, you should be familiar. Uh, but uh, the derivation for this I have shown here, uh, starting from the fundamental half m theta x. So we know that m is equal to sigma z, where z is a section modulus, where z is equal to i by y. And in our case, i is pi, since it is circular section, pi d to the power 4 by 64. And y is actually, we'll take y max, the distance of the fiber from the neutral axis, y. So it is d by 2. Okay? And what I have done is, I just substituted for m here. m is uh, sigma into i by y, uh, square l by 2 di, and... Uh, I have got this expression. I substituted for i here. I also, and then finally, you have to do a slight simplification here, and you will get sigma square 8e by you know, this, uh, this pi d square by 4. This this 4 should go here, so 2 4s are 8. So sigma square by 8e into pi d square by 4 into l, where pi d square by 4 is a, a into l, where a into l is a volume. So sigma square by 8e into a into l so this is a expression for u in terms of bending stress you can find u in terms of moment also so both of the formulas you should know because we don't know what will be given to you in the question okay so these are the fundamental equations in open coil spring and uh, closed coil spring subjected to an axial load okay I haven't taken any other load uh, other than the axial load. And uh, the, I think we will do some problems uh, for this particular case. And then maybe the next section I will uh, derive uh, the formula how to find the angle of twist, delta, etc. If the uh, coil, both the coils are subjected to an axial torque. If it is subjected to an axial torque, then uh, it is uh, the, I mean, you should know how to find these quantities also. But this is the basic, this is the fundamentals, and also the questions will be coming when it is subjected to an axial load, usually in the university, etc. Now, the next session is springs in parallel and springs in series. Uh, actually, this is a very uh, simple topic. Most of you might have learned in uh, maybe in the school also. Uh, so I'll just have a glance at it. Here you can see that uh, the springs are, here only two springs are there. You can have n number of springs. Uh, so here I have shown a figure of two springs alone, uh, which are connected in series in different, different ways. So here you can see a block. Uh, this can be uh, pulled. So here you can apply the load horizontally. Here you can apply the load vertically downwards or the self weight itself can be the load also. And this is another way of connecting the strings uh, to the load. And all these cases A, B and C uh, are uh, under the same case that is uh, under parallel. So this all these are under parallel. Okay. So when two springs are connected in parallel, the total load W is divided between the two springs. Why extension of each spring will be the same. So you can see that when you apply a load W here, E spring will be deflecting by the same M of delta. So suppose if K1 and A2 are uh, the, stif is the stiffness, you know what is the stiffness I had already explained. So K1 and K2 are the stiffness of the springs 1 and 2. And if delta 1 and delta 2 are, is the deflection of the two springs, then uh, delta 1 uh, and delta 2 will be the same, should be the same. And we can put it as delta. 
and the total load W will be shared between the two springs and equally shared if they have the same uh, case. So W will be W1 plus W2, W1 plus W2. And uh, how will you find the equivalent stiffness? So the suppose if delta is a total deflection and K is equivalent stiffness of the whole system, then we can say K equivalent into delta, uh, which is W, uh, is equal to K1 delta 1 plus K2 delta 2. From here, uh, since uh, delta 1 is equal to delta 2 is equal to delta, I can remove all these deltas from here, from both sides of the equation. And I'll get an expression for K equivalent, which is equal to K1 plus K2. Okay. So all these are just uh, different arrangements of the springs in parallel. Similarly, uh, you can put the springs in series also. Now, this is just one uh, method of uh, putting the springs in series. And here you can see that uh, the load W that is acting on these two springs, it will be the same. Uh, this, uh, suppose if W uh, or a force F is applied, then uh, the force in the spring 1 and spring 2, it will be the same. So that is what I have put here. W is equal to W1 is equal to W2 or F is equal to F1 equal to F2. Uh, but the total deflection will be delta 1 plus delta 2. So that is what you have to keep in mind. And here, uh, 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 how do you equate? We know that uh, uh, W is equal to W1 is equal to W2. So W will be, uh, I mean, uh, what is it? Yeah. Okay, sorry. And the total earlier, the deflection was the same. Here, the force will be the same. Now here I can use this expression to get an expression for the equivalent stiffness. Okay, delta total, total uh, delta will be equal to W by K equivalent. And that is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2. Where delta 1 is W1 by K1, W2 is W2 by K2. And you will get the expression like this, 1 by K equivalent is equal to 1 by K1 plus 1 by K2. So this is only for two springs, you can use this expression for n number of springs. And in sometimes uh, uh, you can simplify it again and you can uh, get K equivalent. So 1 by K equivalent is equal to K1 plus K2 by K, uh, um, uh, K1, K2 and you can put it the other, side, other way and get an expression that is also okay. But this is a fundamental uh, equation. Okay? So when two springs are connected in series, E spring will be subjected to a low W or the force and the total extension produced will be the sum of the extensions of the two springs. And you can expect problems from here also. Sometimes you will be given the total uh, deflection and deflection of one of the spring. And you may be asked to find what is the uh, geometrical parameter of any one of the spring, etc. Uh, then you have to use uh, these equations and solve it. Again, analysis problems and design problems uh, can be expected. Uh, can I move to buffer springs? Do I have time? Um, uh, 10.30 is actually like mama. Okay, so maybe I will uh, try to do a small problem on uh, close coil spring and then maybe buffer spring I will take in the next session. So this is just a sample problem so that you will get the feel of it. Uh, sample problem for the closed coil helical spring. Now this is a problem. I'll just read the question. Uh, this is the way in which you will be getting the uh, question. A closed coil helical spring made out of uh, 10 mm diameter steel rod has 10 complete coils, now, each of mean diameter of 80 mm. Calculate the stress induced in the section of the rod the deflection under the pool and the amount of energy stored in the spring during the extension. Uh, I mean, so you have to calculate all this. If it is subjected to an axial pool of 200 newton, take G is equal to 0.84 into 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter square. Okay. So I think uh, if you have the calculator, you can do it for yourself and uh, check whether uh, you have understood uh, the basics. Okay. So we let us... Uh, um, Put the data first and then we will try to solve it. This is a very simple problem just to demonstrate the formulas. Okay. So here you can see 10 mm diameter. So small d is equal to 10 mm. Uh, n is equal to 10. 
capital D is equal to 80. So capital R the radius will be 40, 40 mm. And you are asked to find the stress, uh, that is the shear stress tau, the deflection under the pull, that is delta, and the amount of energy stored in the spring, that is U. Okay, so we have already derived the expression for all these things. Uh, and I think you can just directly apply the formula and get all these quantities. The W, the axial pull, uh, is also uh, given, uh, that is 200 Newton. Okay, and uh, the property is also given to you. The solution also, I have just uh, put it for you. Uh, so what you have to do is uh, you can, first of all, let us found, find the shear stress. You are asked to find the shear stress, deflection, and then uh, the U, strain energy. Okay, so first of all, let us find the shear stress. Shear stress, actually, uh, um, you can use the di formula directly, tau T. Shear stress due to uh, the torque, that is enough, because for a closed coil spring, the other, the shear stress due to uh, W, uh, we are neglecting, and we, uh, you want, you can neglect it, but you can see that the amount, the shear stress due to the uh, W, you can see it's only 2.55, and the other one is 40.74. So if you want, you can neglect it, or else you can include that also, and you can find the maximum shear stress. Here, the formula is 16 T by 5 EQ. T is actually W, you have to find the T. Uh, only W will be given to you, so the uh, T you have to find, which is equal to W R. So 200 into 40, and then um, after finding T, you have to substitute. Everything else is given to you. Small d is 10, 10 mm. And uh, if you have a G in terms of uh, mega Newton or I mean uh, mega Pascal, etc., you may have to. It's better that you convert it into Newton and m of units so that uh, you will get a good answer. If you go, if you go to meter. And it will be point something, so it will be very difficult for you to handle. So whatever quantity you have, maybe you can substitute uh, the force quantity in Newton and uh, uh, the length quantity in mm, uh, so that you will be able to work with the um, problems. And uh, tau t, tau s, w by a, w is the uh, load. So 200 into a is 5d square by 4, and you get the maximum shear stress in that formula. I mean, in that uh, spring. And delta, again, it is simply direct application of the formula for delta, uh, uh, delta 64 WR cube N by GD to the power 4. Everything is directly given to you. W, R, N, G, and D. Okay, so you will get the delta as 9.75 mm. And the energy stored in the spring, actually, it is U. If you, you don't need to use a formula for U in terms of shear stress, tau, etc., because we know the delta and W here directly. So you can save time by simply taking this formula, half W delta, half into 200 into delta we have already found. So it is 9.75. So you will get it as 975 Newton mm or 0.975 Newton meter. Or if you are asked in joules, it will be 0.975 joules. Okay. So you can get it as a uh, one word um, uh, problem or gate, etc. Or is to in university problem. I think uh, I have to stop now. Shall we have a break, ma'am? Uh... Uh, uh, was my voice breaking or were you able to understand? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you are audible now. Ma'am, hello? I will take the remaining portion in the next session then. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. We'll join at uh, nine. See, ten forty-five, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, ma'am.